episode 686. It's in the bag. Two days passed, and Caitlin's condition improved significantly. Emma visited her at the hospital, and after seeing that she was looking better, she finally began to relax. Why are you just standing in the doorway? Caitlin asked, noticing the concerned look on Emma's face. Come on in and sit down. You must be exhausted. I'm fine, Emma replied as she sat on the edge of Caitlin's bed. Where's Luis? He took Maria to school, Caitlin replied. I have a big favor to ask. Maria has her school vacation soon. I had assumed I would be home with her and Luis will be working. I was just about to call to see if she could stay at your place for a few days. We would be happy to have her over, Emma said. With our own little one coming soon, taking care of her would be good practice. I haven't rested like this for a long time, Caitlin said. It's nice to finally get to take a break, even though it wasn't exactly for the best reason. She noticed Emma glancing at her bandaged leg. I know the world will be a very different place after I recover, she said. But what can I do about it? Maybe it's best for me to copy you and retreat from the industry so I can focus on myself and my family. Won't you miss working? Emma asked. I love my family more than anything in the world, even modeling, Caitlin replied. As long as I still have them by my side, I'll be fine. I know that I just won't have the same presence or confidence on the runway anymore with an injury like this. I know how the industry is, and I'm trying to keep realistic expectations. Luis has also been so busy lately, and I want to take some of the weight off his shoulders. As long as you're happy with your decision, I'll be happy too, Emma said. It took me a while to get to this point, but I'm honestly fine now, Caitlin replied. What about you? Eliza called and asked me to reach out to you. She was afraid that your imagination would go wild. What happened between you and Eric? Why does she think there's another woman? Emma looked out the window and sat in silence. You don't believe her nonsense, do you? Caitlin asked. Even if another woman tried to seduce him, you know your relationship is solid. Eliza just hasn't had a good chance to see the way Eric and I interact with each other. So she's worrying for no reason, Emma replied. They continued chatting quietly while they waited for Luis to return to the hospital. When he arrived, Emma told him to drop Maria off at Kaleidoscope later that afternoon, and she could go home with them then. After he left again to pick up Maria from school, Emma headed over to Kaleidoscope. She sat down with a book in Eric's office while she waited for Maria to arrive. She snuck glances at Eric as she read, 
seeing that there was nothing unusual about how he was acting, she just decided to ask. Your mother saw you go next door, she said. Why did you buy that place? He lifted his head and smiled at her. I bought it so that we'd have plenty of space with the new addition to our family, he said. I'm planning on connecting the two spaces together. Are you planning for our child to have their own home? She asked. That's kind of excessive. I'm just thinking that we'll need more space. I know the baby will just be a tiny person, but from what I understand, their stuff can take up a lot of room. And this way, you can have your own space too. Although, I imagine you'll be pretty focused on the baby. I'll probably just fade into the background. She sighed and shook her head. Stop being so silly, she said. You're making your mother worry about us. She thinks you have a secret lover. Really? he asked. Do you believe her? I know you can't be bothered to even glance at another woman, she said. And now I know that you care about me so much that you're scared that the little creature in my belly will compete with you for affection. He's cute when he's jealous, even if he's being ridiculous, she thought as she smiled at him. At least I know I really have nothing to worry about now. Soon after, Luis arrived with Maria in tow. As soon as he saw Emma, he smiled with relief. I already have my hands full between work and taking care of Caitlin, he said. Thank you so much for helping us out on such short notice. Take good care of Caitlin, Emma said, as she took Maria's hand in hers and led her over to the sofa. Did you have a nice day at school? She asked. Maria nodded as she looked around the office and then sat on the sofa next to Emma. Just as Emma was pulling a lollipop out of her pocket for Maria, the little girl clutched her arm. Just, just a second ago, I saw, she stammered. What did you see? Emma asked. I saw the lady, Maria said. What lady do you mean? Emma replied. Maria grabbed Emma's hand and pulled her out of the room using all the strength in her little body, leading her to an artist's waiting room. What is it? Emma asked. What are you trying to show me? Through the open door, Maria pointed to a round bag with an elk printed on it. I saw that bag when the dog bit mommy, she said. Where did you see the bag? She asked, stunned that Maria had remembered such a small detail despite all the trauma. A lady walked past us right before the dog bit mommy, she said. I thought her bag was pretty. I liked it a lot. I just saw the same lady again. 
Emma tried to keep her face blank as she calmly led Maria away. That's Layla's office, she thought. I already had my suspicions, but that pretty much confirms that she was behind everything. Emma brought Maria back to Eric's office, where she helped her settle in on the sofa, and then went to talk to Eric. Caitlin called me before the attack, she said. She thought that someone was planning to hurt her. I trust her instincts, and I've been looking into the incident for clues since then. Marjorie said that the person who tried to make her mad enough to hurt me came from Kaleidoscope. I think it's time we investigate this in detail. Eric closed his last document and looked at Emma. You're right. We do need to look into this. But right now... I'm too tired to think straight. Let's go home now and talk about it after we've eaten. As someone who was used to always getting her way, Layla had no idea that justice was slowly but certainly coming for her. Quinn had completely changed her appearance to try and cover up the situation. But one careless moment and a child's innocent observation were all that Emma had needed to connect the dots. Some people might think that the bag is just a coincidence, Emma thought. But too many other details line up for that to be the case. Episode 687 Talk Show Trouble After secretly trailing Quinn for a few days, the HR manager at Kaleidoscope dug up a lot of unexpected information, and he relayed it to Emma as she sat in Eric's office a couple of days later. The woman's name is Quinn, he said. She's an old friend of Layla's, and they've been working together for a long time. Layla only managed to rise within the industry so quickly because of Quinn's help. She knows how to take advantage of Layla's strong points, especially her background. She secures endorsements easily, and she's a cautious and calculating person. She's the only person Layla trusts completely, and the two of them complement each other's strengths. Their combined abilities have allowed them to make great strides in the entertainment industry. Quinn used to have short hair, but she's recently started to wear a wig. It seems that she got a nose job to hide her identity. I wasn't able to trail her everywhere, but from what I saw, I'm assuming she follows Layla's schedule for the most part. As for the bag you asked me to investigate, I found out that it was a limited edition release and there are only five in the whole world. The chances that someone else has that same bag are extremely low. Emma sat quietly and thought about the situation for a moment. When did Quinn start wearing a wig? She asked. Only a few days ago, he replied. If I remember correctly, it was around the time that Marjorie held her press conference. 
It's no wonder that when Marjorie came to the office, she couldn't find the person she was looking for. Emma thought, Quinn managed to hide in plain sight. Don't let anyone know that I asked about Quinn, she said. Don't worry, he replied. I'll keep it a secret. Emma nodded and waved the manager off as anger slowly bubbled up inside her. Those two used a child to do their dirty work, and Caitlin almost lost her leg because of them, she thought, clenching her jaw. How low will they sink to try and get what they want? Luis will handle Caitlin's incident, Eric said. I want to know who said something to Marjorie to make her fly off the handle. Emma knew what had happened before Marjorie had surrendered to the police, even though she hadn't heard it from Eric himself, so she didn't ask him for any further details. If Quinn was the one who egged Marjorie on... She's done for, she thought. And since she works for Layla, it's almost guaranteed that Layla is behind everything. He's going to make both of their lives a living hell. Eric picked up his phone and called Luis. I want you to start cutting off some of Layla's opportunities, he said. She never should have messed with my family. Layla had no idea that she had become Emma's top suspect in the attack. And she was busy dreaming of the day when she would surpass Emma in popularity She was used to being a winner and enjoyed looking down on people. But her days of being on top were numbered. Louise had no idea what Layla had done and was taken aback by Eric's request. But he did what he was told. That night... Layla was supposed to appear on a popular talk show that aired internationally. The show was a great opportunity for her to boost her career and close the popularity gap between her and Emma. But while the interview had been extensive, she barely appeared in the final recording of the show. What's wrong with the producer? Quinn wondered as she watched the recording in shock. He's a complete fool for cutting someone as famous as Layla out of the show. Doesn't he care about the show's ratings at all? Quinn went to look for the producer and found him in the editing room, sipping a cup of coffee as he looked through the interview footage. Sorry to interrupt, but I was just wondering if Layla offended you in some way, she said. She barely has any screen time on the show. I don't have anything against her personally, the producer said as he shook his head and continued to stare at the screen. Why would you go through the trouble of interviewing her and then only put her on screen for a few seconds? Quinn asked. Are you complaining that her segment is too small? He replied. If that's the case, we might as well cut it out completely. He then walked away without even looking at Quinn. Quinn was so angry that she wanted to yell at him. 
but she knew he was a top-class producer. No matter how brave she was, she wouldn't dare argue with him unless she wanted to sabotage Layla's entire career. But she still couldn't accept that he had cut Layla from the show. She returned to Layla's side to explain what had happened, and Layla stayed surprisingly calm. Did you mention my family's background? She asked. He didn't give me the chance, Gwen replied. Give Kaleidoscope a call and speak to Luis, Layla said. This has to be a mistake. Layla was undoubtedly talented, but she wasn't very modest about it. If she ever had any issues, even in the middle of the night, she wanted Luis to drop whatever he was doing to deal with them immediately. But Luis was at the hospital with Caitlin, and he had switched his phone off, knowing that Layla would come looking for him. So Layla hung up, and called Luke instead, who was in the middle of driving Eric and Emma home. He pulled to the side of the road and picked up the phone. The talk show producer totally snubbed Layla tonight, and Kaleidoscope needs to deal with it, Quinn said. Quinn, can I call you back later? He asked. I'm busy driving right now. I can take it for you, Emma said, reaching out for the phone. He handed her the phone and got back on the road. Emma glanced at Eric and then lowered her voice. What happened? She asked Quinn. Who are you? Quinn said. This is private kaleidoscope business. What makes you think it's okay to reach out directly to the CEO's office? Emma replied. Luis was unavailable, and I didn't know who else to call, Quinn said. This is an important situation, and it needs to be dealt with immediately. Just how important does Layla think she is? Emma asked. Does she think she deserves Eric's attention too? Quinn finally recognized the voice as Emma's. With all due respect, Mrs. Roberts, you're just an artist at Kaleidoscope, she said. This is an issue for management to deal with. If I let you talk with Eric, he'll make you wish you had just talked it through with me, Emma said. I'll take my chances, Gwen replied. Emma tried to hand the phone to Eric, but he waved her away. Tell her boss to come to the office tomorrow and talk to Luis, he said. She sure knows how to be a nuisance. Episode 688 Cat and Mouse Sensing the threatening undertone in Eric's voice, Quinn became worried. She knew that if Kaleidoscope could lift Layla to new heights, they could also drag her back down just as easily. Eric used his power to give his artists the best possible resources, but he had strict standards. The artists at Kaleidoscope respected and feared him at the same time. Quinn no longer dared to act impulsively, 
fearing that she would harm Layla's future. She swallowed her anger and went to talk with Layla, who was waiting in a production trailer. Louise said that he would look into it tomorrow, she said. Can't he do it tonight? Layla asked. What's the holdup? You're aware that his wife is in the hospital, Quinn replied. Of course I am, Layla said, glaring at Quinn. She then closed her eyes to get some rest. Quinn assumed that Layla had forgotten about the entire matter until Layla dragged her into Luis's office the next morning. What was up with the talk show last night? Layla asked Luis. Don't they know who I am? I don't know what you're talking about, Luis replied, closely following Eric's instructions. You know how influential my grandfather is, she said. Don't play dumb. They almost totally cut me out of the show, even though they knew who I am and where I come from. They wouldn't just do that for no reason. Your grandfather has been retired for a long time, he replied. The producer has close contacts with people way more influential than your grandfather ever was. Don't you think you're stepping out of line by questioning his judgment about his show's content? Both Layla and Quinn were left speechless by his cold response. Who does he think he is? disrespecting my family like that, Layla thought, balling her hand up into a fist. I don't see what the big deal is anyway, Louis said. So what if you had less screen time than you're used to? Plenty of artists put up with stuff like this. What makes you think you deserve special treatment? You even had the audacity to call Eric's office instead of taking it up with me or the other managers. He hates it when people think they're better than everyone else. And he especially hates it when they try to waste his time. If you don't have anything to say for yourself, you can leave. Layla felt humiliated and her face flushed as she shot Luis a murderous look. Let's get out of here, Quinn whispered, knowing it wouldn't be wise for them to have a fallout with the agency when Layla's career was on the rise. Kaleidoscope was the best platform in the industry for her, and she would have a hard time clawing herself back to the top without their help. I'll remember the way you talked to me today, Layla said to Luis before storming out the door with Quinn by her side, attracting the stares of several Kaleidoscope employees. Back in her office, Layla sat quietly. Quinn gave her some time to cool down before she patted her on the shoulder. Try to relax, Quinn said. This will all blow over soon. Why do they treat me like that? Layla asked. Kaleidoscope didn't do anything wrong, Quinn replied. Eric never wastes his time with things that Luis or Luke can handle, so it's normal for him to disregard you. I thought that you liked that about him. And Luis might have been a bit harsh, but he was just telling it like it is. Your background may be impressive, 
But there are plenty of people in this world with impressive backgrounds and family in high places. Just think of today as a lesson. We're also responsible for the attack on his wife. So we shouldn't provoke him any further, or he might get suspicious. Let's just suck it up for now and see how it plays out. Layla took a deep breath and tried to suppress her anger. I'm going to be so famous someday that he'll have no choice but to do what I want, she said. You'll be unstoppable, Quinn replied. After they left, Luis sat in his office and reviewed Layla's information. She's incredibly popular right now, he thought. I know Eric can't stand people like her, but he's shooting himself in the foot by sabotaging her career. What's going on here? Emma had no plans to reveal the truth yet because she didn't know what Luis would do if he found out that Layla and Quinn had attacked Caitlin. Although she had basically confirmed they were to blame, she needed time to act on her hunch and secure enough evidence first. Since Layla enjoyed playing a game of cat and mouse, she was going to play along. Later that morning, Eliza returned to the Burns home. After her identity was confirmed, Francis discovered all the trauma that Eliza had gone through and was eager to welcome her home. Meanwhile, ever since Bridget and Richard had confessed their love to each other, Bridget was over the moon with happiness. Her competition with Kara grew fiercer by the minute. The director gave her more chances to show her skill, and she took every scene seriously. She both loved and hated having some competition, but her improvement was clear. The director didn't tell her that everything was part of Richard's plan and that all of her scenes had actually been recorded properly. At first, Kara had an obvious advantage, but as support for Bridget grew, it was hard not to admit that she had improved dramatically. That night, Bridget continued filming until 11. Richard had to return to the set of The Realm early the next day, but he stayed late with her to keep her company. He liked to take things slowly in his relationships, but he was Bridget's first boyfriend, and she wanted to spend every waking moment by his side. As a result, he ended up spending the night on set, but he refused to sleep in her room. They couldn't allow the others to discover their relationship, but they kept stealing glances at each other. Trying to hide their feelings was becoming more and more difficult. The next morning, Bridget leaned over and placed a quick kiss on Richard's cheek as he slept, and then quickly pulled away, looking around to make sure no one had noticed. He opened his eyes and chuckled as he saw her standing beside him. I'm getting too old for this, he said. What's wrong? she asked with a pout. It was just a little peck on the cheek. You have to be more careful, he said, 
as he sat up and nudged her arm. Someone might see us. I thought we're dating now, she said. Why can't I give you a little kiss now and then? I'm trying to protect you, he said as he got up from the cot. I have to get going. Take care of yourself on set. When will you come back? She asked, staring at him hopefully. That depends on your performance today, he replied before he turned and left. Episode 689 Layla's Self-Sabotage After the talk show incident, Layla's jobs continued to have issues. She either didn't get many shots in front of the camera during live interviews, or she got no attention at all. If it had just happened once or twice, she might have ignored it. But after missing so many opportunities, she began to suspect that someone was manipulating things behind the scenes. Why are you still sitting here? Quinn asked as she spotted Layla smoking on the balcony. It's getting late. Haven't you noticed that my jobs haven't been going well lately? Layla replied. I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary, Quinn said. You're still fully booked and talk shows are still asking for you. I think you're just not getting as much attention as you're used to, but that's totally normal in the industry. Media interest comes and goes all the time. I keep feeling like Kaleidoscope is deliberately sabotaging me, Layla said as she looked into the distance and took a puff of her cigarette. They have no reason to do that. Quinn said. You're one of their top artists. Don't forget about Emma, Layla replied. It wasn't easy for her to get where she is today, and I suddenly appeared and stole her limelight. She's bound to hate me. You have a point, Quinn said. So what should we do now? Since Kaleidoscope started this, they can't blame me for retaliating, Layla said as she put out her cigarette. Her arrogance is going to be the ruin of her, Quinn thought with a sigh. Early the next morning, news started spreading that Kaleidoscope was sabotaging Layla's jobs. After hearing the news... Louise knocked on Eric's office door and let himself in. The rumors have started about Layla, he said to Emma. They didn't start on their own, she said, as she remained focused on the script in front of her. Layla started them. She wants Eric and me to know that she's not going to back down. How did she offend Eric anyway? He asked, raising an eyebrow. I know she's arrogant, but she takes it out on me, not on him. I don't know how she stepped on his toes. She glanced up at him and said, I really can't talk about it right now, but trust me, we have a good reason. It's not like you to go around in circles like this, he said. Please, stop stringing me along. Just tell me what's happening. Emma sat in silence for a while, thinking. 
she finally said, The person who prodded Marjorie to poison me was Layla's assistant, Quinn. I'm sure you can understand why Eric made these arrangements for Layla. Are you sure? he asked. How do you know she was responsible? Marjorie came to Kaleidoscope to try to identify the person who had egged her on. She looked all over the agency and couldn't find the culprit, she said. We thought that that person must not be from Kaleidoscope after all. But it turned out that she had changed her appearance. You can't assume it's Quinn based on that, he replied. We didn't. Eric brought a photo of Quinn with short hair and no makeup to Marjorie to confirm her identity, she said. Those two women are tricky, he said. They almost got away with it. I couldn't rest until we found out who attacked me, she said. There's no way I would let them get away with it. Why don't you call the police? he asked. She put down her script and sipped her glass of water. Because it's not time yet she said. But the public is already up in arms over Layla, he said. They think you're jealous of her and are using Kaleidoscope to sabotage her. You can use another artist to distract them, she replied. I know that Layla is a rare talent, but she's a monster. And if we keep her around, she'll just hurt more people to get what she wants. I won't go easy on her, he said. I don't know if I can even stand to look her in the eye after what she did. I can't imagine what he would do if he knew what she did to Caitlin, she thought. I can't tell him yet. Luis stood up and left, but a moment later, he returned to the office. Layla wants to see you, he said. Do you want to talk with her? I'll speak to her out on the balcony, she replied. She can't do anything to me there. There were plenty of people standing around the open balcony. No matter how reckless Layla was, she would never try to hurt Emma where others could see. Emma stood up from the sofa and walked out to the balcony, and Eric gestured for the bodyguard to keep an eye on her. Layla was waiting for her. I didn't think you would actually agree to meet me, she said. What do you want? Emma asked as she sat down opposite Layla and sized her up. You're not only a talented model and actress, but also a skilled manipulator, Layla said as she stirred her coffee and laughed. Do I really intimidate you that much? Is that why you turned Eric against me? Emma also laughed as she looked at Layla. We're not even in the same field, she said. Why would I treat you as a competitor? You're a talented songwriter, and your script writing isn't bad. But you're not a model. And you don't have any acting skills. Why would I even care about you? If that's the case, 
Then why would you get Eric to sabotage me? Layla asked. I might not have long legs or acting skills, but I'm young and I'm already famous. By the time I reach your age, I'll have achieved so much more than you. You also might not achieve even half of what I have achieved, Emma replied. You're only hurting yourself by trying to provoke me. If you keep pushing me, you're asking for trouble. Layla laughed. Is that a threat? She asked. You're so washed up that you can barely keep up with someone as young as me. And you need Eric's help to do your dirty work. Do you think I'm scared of you? Episode 690 Leveling the Playing Field Emma had never met a person as confident as Layla, but she simply shrugged in response and looked at her blankly. Stop with the phony indifference, Layla said. I know you're quietly plotting against me. You're still young, Emma replied. You have a lot to learn. Layla pushed back her chair and left. How dare she disrespect me like that, she thought. I'll make her regret treating me like a kid. A moment later, Luis approached Emma. Is everything all right? He asked. What did you expect her to do to me? She replied. I don't know what she's capable of after the incident with Marjorie, he said. We have to be careful. She has no chance of winning against me, Emma said. I honestly enjoy the way she underestimates me. Emma's ability to read her opponents had become frighteningly good, and her confidence in dealing with them had skyrocketed. But Layla wasn't her average opponent. What did Emma say? Quinn asked as she followed behind Layla. What else could she say? Layla asked. Of course she denied it. I hate people who don't admit what they've done. What should we do? Quinn said. Now that we've confirmed that Emma's done something behind the scenes and that Kaleidoscope is sabotaging you, what are our next steps? There's plenty we can do, Layla replied. It's not like I'm obligated to stay with Kaleidoscope. We have other options. Emma isn't getting any younger, and judging by her expression today, she's just pretending to be calm because she doesn't know how to compete against someone so young and successful. She won't be able to keep up much longer. Compared to Emma's other opponents, Layla was a lot more calculating. Underneath her arrogance, she knew how to judge a situation. But she didn't know that Emma's calmness was a bluff and that her infamous temper was simmering underneath the surface as she waited for the perfect time to strike. Layla knew that Emma had access to all of Kaleidoscope's resources. And if she wanted to make Emma truly fearful, she would need to pull out all the stops. Maybe I can pretend that other companies are fighting over me, she thought, scratching her chin. 
That will make her jealous for sure. With news of Kaleidoscope's actions against Layla, plenty of agencies tried to offer her a way out, including the newly re-established H-World. A few other film and TV agencies also expressed their interest. Layla pretended to stay loyal to Kaleidoscope, but she made sure to show everyone that Kaleidoscope was losing its professionalism. She wanted everyone to know that Eric was willing to sabotage his own artist to keep Emma at the top, and that he was treating his contracts as a joke. She wanted Kaleidoscope to feel flustered. She wanted them to acknowledge her importance. But after all the commotion she had caused, Kaleidoscope simply denied her claims. During an interview, a reporter asked Luis, Is it true that Kaleidoscope is actively sabotaging Layla's jobs? No one at Kaleidoscope knows anything about that, he replied. Layla appears to be spreading all these baseless rumors just because her career has hit a rough patch. Have you heard that other agencies have sent her offers? The reporter asked. There was even a leaked photo of her having dinner with the boss of another agency. We haven't been notified of this either, he said. Luis was Kaleidoscope's former PR manager, so he had no trouble dispelling the media's doubts with a simple deflection. I think Layla knows the importance of respecting contracts, he said. This one simple sentence was enough to highlight Kaleidoscope's bottom line. If Layla dared to change agencies, Kaleidoscope would make sure she paid financially. Luis didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Why does she keep asking for trouble like this? He wondered. Doesn't she know who she's messing with by now? With so many talented artists already on Kaleidoscope's roster, Layla wasn't as important as she thought. She fully intended to change agencies, but she didn't want to leave so easily. She wanted to make Kaleidoscope panic first. So she continued to release songs as usual, and the response to her new releases was so good that she appeared on entertainment news and rankings at the top of the music charts. But after a while, Kaleidoscope remains completely unaffected, and Layla finally ran out of steam. She didn't have a rich and powerful person backing her, so she had to do everything herself. She turned to Quinn. Do you think I should find someone to back me up? She asked. You just realized that? Quinn replied, having already suggested that Layla should find someone a long time ago. Plenty of people came from famous families like Layla's, but her background alone wouldn't be enough to springboard her ahead of everyone else anymore. She used to think relying on someone else for financial support was beneath her, but as Kaleidoscope slowly pulled the rug out from under her, she started second-guessing herself. I told you before that the heir of KH Entertainment tried to ask you out on a date, Quinn said. But you ignored him. 
Do you want me to organize a meeting with him? His family owns half the theaters in the country. Layla took a puff of her cigarette and nodded. I'll meet with him, she said. But aren't we just letting Emma win? Why would you say that? Quinn replied. Eric is supporting her and has given her more resources than most artists could ever dream of. What we're doing is giving you a fair starting point. That's right, Layla thought. If Emma won't take me on one-on-one, -on -one, why can't I have someone help me level the playing field? I'll leave things for you to arrange, she said. Quinn refused to admit that Layla was taking a shortcut. It's the smartest thing to do in this situation, she thought. I only wish she hadn't waited this long to consider it. If she'd looked for financial backing sooner, we might not be in this mess right now. While Layla was causing a commotion, Emma was getting some rest at home and reading her scripts. She didn't even need to lift a finger to throw Layla into a panic. What's Layla planning to do next? Lisa asked. After all, it had been a long time since Emma had met a decent opponent. I don't know, Emma replied. She wants attention so badly that it's kind of pathetic. It seems like she feels pretty good about herself right now and wants to make Eric regret what he did to her, Lisa said. She wants to make you regret it too. I think she still has a lot of tricks up her sleeve. Emma smiled. I'll wait and see what kind of sensational scene she can create, she said. Do you already know what she's planning to do? Lisa asked, watching Emma's face. Doesn't she just want to make things difficult for me at all costs? Emma replied. <laughs>